Flashback, Episode 11, Knights Templar Illuminati Safe House in Riverdale, New York City. Tiny dropped us off at the Lowville train station, where we would train all the way to the Knights Templar Illuminati Safe House, which was located in the upscale Riverdale area of the Bronx Borough in New York City of Dis. Our train ride was surprisingly uneventful. We rode the train with many transfers from Lowville, which was in the rural far north of New York State, all the way to our destination. We had finally arrived in the northwestern area of the New York City borough called the Bronx. We arrived at its upscale Riverdale neighborhood. I had never been myself to the Bronx. I had only heard of it through TV shows and movies. Well, there were certainly poor areas and graffiti covered areas as well as we trained through the borough. But there were also very nice areas too. Everything existed from the poor to middle to upper class to the outright crazy wealthy. It all seemed to live in the Bronx. They had their own neighborhoods, each of the castes, if you will. It seemed very segregated by wealth. Even the neighborhoods had their defined territory and thus their defined identity segregation. Katie observed, I did not realize that New York's Bronx had nice areas. I always thought of it as a notorious gangster, a hood, with, you know, poor and desperate people and criminals. Katie almost smiled. I am glad to see people are doing okay here in the Bronx. It gives me hope that down and out places can also be at least okay enough for people to get by. Bob shattered Katie's optimism and positive view. Sure, Katie, they're all doing okay. Bob darkly said, We see a lot of homeless on the streets. And we see panhandlers. And we see spanglers and beggars on the street corners. And outside the shops especially those that sell booze and liquor. And we see people living on the streets using stolen shopping carts to transport what little things they have, even up into the middle class districts. Bob even more darkly added, and Katie, that is what we see on the surface. He concluded, the real sorrow, Katie, is what's beneath, what's below the rock, should we ever overturn it and look. The real tragedy is the nightmare below the sheets, under the blanket, Bob trailed off. Sarah looked to Bob and then to Katie, and then she made eye contact with everyone to be sure that she had everyone's full, total attention. She said softly, Look, God has a plan for everyone, even for those who are struggling. I know that God has a plan for me, and God has a plan for Mr. Lesky, for my father. Sarah demanded, So everyone please focus on the mission not socio-economic conditions of any area that we're in or traveling through. Just have faith. It is all part of God's plan. Challenges, she educated us. Challenges, sometimes. Hardships, sometimes, are part of being forged into a stronger and more capable more righteous person. Sarah concluded, do not believe 
that all hardships are bad for you. Like viruses, hardships can build muscle strength. Use your hardships and challenges to make yourself stronger. I muse aloud for the group. Hmm, well, that was deep, Sarah. I don't know why, but as to different socioeconomic areas, well, I think they all have importance to the city and to the state of New York itself. Everyone in every area, they all work and have friends and have families. It does not matter how wealthy they are or not. They can be poor. It does not matter what their socioeconomic status. It does not matter what their wealth or zip code is. Every single person matters. I snarked, all lives matter. Well, unrelated, but I had a revelation. Huh. I guess gangs, just like city planners, share a common attribute. They both have turf. Municipalities, they both wage turf and jurisdiction wars, and they both demand tribute taxes over their territory. Well, as we arrived at the Knights Templar Illuminati, the safe house in Riverdale in the Bronx, Taylor exclaimed, this is a safe house? Well, the safe house, it turned out, the Knights Templar safe house was very posh. It was upscale in the fancy area of the Bronx, known as Riverdale. In fact, the safe house turned out to be a full-blown 19th century estate with a mansion. Sarah recognized our jaw-drop reaction to the massively wealthy safe house, and she smiled. Despite many of the Manhattan moguls offering to buy this landmark safe house of ours, we have maintained ownership of it always. Sarah furthered, it has been in the Knights Templar ownership since its construction. It was built specifically to be a safe haven for the Knights Templar Illuminati here in America. Sarah explained, there is a long history behind the estate. Sarah noted, in addition to offering safe haven since its construction, this place was used for Harriet Tubman's Underground Railroad to help save slaves so they might escape the South during the Civil War. She asserted, what is relevant is that we are here and we have a home base with extensive armaments and resources. The safe house has an underground bunker, panic room, with ventilation supplies, everything we might need. It should last well over a year for four or five people. Sarah grinned. The Knights Templar Illuminati have been in America since its beginning and all the way through its civil war. We have and will always offer haven to the righteous and to the needy. And this estate has been an underground hidden haven for all of those that have needed it. Today, we are in need of it. The safe house will be our home base headquarters here in America. Taylor jumped in. Well, I have never in all my missions Covert and not, seen a safe house that was an estate and mansion. She laughed. I mean, the opulence, the wealth, it stands out. Our coming and going will be very apparent. It's not really a safe house, it seems to me, in my opinion. Sarah responded to Taylor. The alternative would be what? We could have an unsecure flop in the hood downtown. 
where we would be observed frequently and all of our resource caches would be at risk of casual theft? Sarah asserted, no, no safe house is ever truly safe. They are merely safer. Taylor muttered under her breath, Pua. Sarah explained, There is a retired caretaker couple for the estate. They keep the estate operating and outside of suspicion. They also pursue charity work wherever possible. They serve as community volunteers and they offer philanthropic donations and they offer scholarships to the Bronx borough within New York. Of course, they also operate as our informants and relays and they make deliveries for our global spy network. Sarah closed. We are officially their guests. No one need know more or have any interactions with them at all. Their charity work and the size of the estate justifies visitors coming and going. And so our cover story is simple. We are visitors, which will discuss possible contributing to their charitable foundation. They're a cautioned. They are safer knowing the least information as possible about us, about our mission, and about our plans. In a grave tone, she added, information kills the innocent. Knowledge is valuable, far more valuable than their lives far more valuable to the monsters that might seek their information. Please give only the necessary information to anybody or the consequences can be death or at least great pain en route to the same outcome, death. Sarah stated, the caretakers know this as well. They will keep their distance. Hmm. I wondered how many people or even companies and organizations are operating as beneficiaries to the Knights Templar Illuminati or their holdings or investments, whether it be direct or indirect access to them. It seemed to me that there were a lot of people and businesses all operating under or being funded or subsidized by, in some form or another, the Knights Templar Illuminati. I pondered how big was the Knights Templar Illuminati? How big was his organization network? It must have been vast. Well, after that gloom and doom introduction to the Knights Templar Illuminati, American Cloak and Dagger and Spy Network stuff by Sarah, and how if we told our hosts what we were doing, what was going on, they might be compromised and be murdered. Yeah, that was a very charming consideration. Well, after it, I suppose we could relax, if you can ever say that we relaxed anymore. Well, we were in our safe house, a safe house that was a 19th century mansion in the upscale area called Riverdale in the Bronx of New York City of Dis. We were exhausted and quickly unpacked and settled in. And we slept soundly until the next morning. <laughs>